Thank you very much, Your Excellency, our President, Mama Rachel, the First Lady, Deputy President, Mama Dokas, my brother, Speaker of the Senate, Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Members present, Members of Parliament and our support team, all congregants to this wonderful prayer breakfast. My role is fairly simple. My brother King has walked us through the day. Is to pass a vote of thanks to those who have, in one way or another, made this day the day. We've been told about hope, and Your Excellency and our guest speaker, you have spoken so well about hope. We must keep hope alive. We must be hopeful people. We must be a hopeful nation to move to the future. Indeed, those who have no hope have no future because it is hope that gives us a life. So as a nation, we must hold very fast to hope. When we are faced with an adversity, as leaders, we must inspire hope to our people, and we must lift those who are weary, who walk with difficulty to move with us for a better future. There is an Irish priest who one day went to church, and the weather was terrible. And there was an old lady who could hardly walk because of the weather. And the priest told her, Mom, it is not always like this. Those are words of hope that there will be something better all the time. In the Bible, in the book of Matthew, 11:26 Jesus himself when his disciples were panicking because he has said it will be very difficult for many of you to see the kingdom of God of God he said with men this is impossible but with God all things are possible that is hope from none other than our Savior, Jesus Christ. So any of you who has been fading in your hopes, renew, rekindle, rejuvenate, and redirect your hope to a better future. Allow me to thank the following for this day His Excellency the President His Excellency the Deputy President and our first and second ladies Mama Rachel, Mama Dokas for sparing time to join Parliament in leading these prayers all the national leaders here today, from all the arms of government, from the executive led by the president, from the legislature led by yours truly and my brother Kingi, from the judiciary, my own classmate Justice Lesit representing the Chief Justice, The Speaker of the East African Legislative Assembly, who is here with us, the Right Honorable Joseph 
Ndakiru Timana. You may stand to be acknowledged, Speaker. Thank you. Diplomats and other members of the diplomatic community present, co-chairs of the Parliamentary Prayer Fellowship, the Honorable Samuel Chepkonga, and the Honorable Dan Manzo, prayer breakfast coordinators, Professor Ronkei, and Mr. Sam Owen, who are here with us, various prayer groups that were mentioned earlier, who have been part of the planning and support to the prayer breakfast, the clergy present, parliamentary service commission members who avail resources for this event, members of parliament for making this prayer breakfast part of our calendar to show our country, our people, that in God we trust and in prayer we shape our future. Foreign delegations that have already been mentioned, our staff of parliament and other government agencies who formed the technical organizing committee, all Kenyans who have been faithful to this event, who quietly in their sitting rooms, in their offices, are glued to their televisions to follow these proceedings. The media, who keep us informed, sometimes rightly, sometimes not, as we have been told by the President, who keep the country informed. But above all, the backroom operators, your drivers, your security, everybody who helped us to get here, the young children who stood here to demonstrate the hope in our future, who have come from all over the country, to join in these prayers. Your Excellency, yesterday we had a meeting of East African speakers and the speaker from the Federal Republic of Somalia who was here in Kenya during the peace process. In the media he was always called a warlord. It's called Ali Madobe. He told us from the time the reconstruction of Somalia was done here in Kenya and they formed a very fragile government, their only ray of hope came to fruition when the East African leaders allowed Somalia to join the East African community. And we are truly touched with this, that he left his warlordism and is now focused on being a responsible player to grow the East African community. That is hope. And we all must cheer these great events in our midst. Last but not least, we want to encourage all Kenyans, wherever you are, that we have no alternative country. We have only one Kenya. Whatever our challenges, we must believe in the hope that nothing is insurmountable. There's a writer called Sidney Sheldon who wrote a book with a very captivating title called Nothing Lasts Forever. Even your problem will not last forever. So let's look to the beacon of hope that is our future. Lift those who are below us to the same comfort levels and face our future with confidence. It's now my hope that every one of you has the same level of hope as our president has told us. 
Your Excellency, now it's my duty to invite you, my brother Rigiji, Mama Dokas, Mama Rachel, to step forward and receive a gift of Bibles. <laughs>